The moon does not fight. It attacks no one. It does not worry. It does not try to crush others. It keeps to its course, but by its very nature, it gently influences. What other body could pull an entire ocean from shore to shore? The moon is faithful to its nature and its power is never diminished. Deng Ming Dao. She is powerful. Her waxing and waning is a consistent central portion of our lives. We may not always notice her, but the waves of the ocean unite seamlessly into a rhythm that affects so many portions of our life. She is the moon. And this morning, we will explore some of the celebrations held around the world in which she is a central figure as well as exploring a number of deities from pantheons throughout time. Let's begin with a bit of history on the subject, pagan history specifically. As so many before us have chosen to do, we shall begin with, the, with Greco-Roman history. Author Helen Kaufman wrote that witches in Greek and more often Roman literature are regularly accused of drawing down the moon by a magic spell. The trick serves to demonstrate their powers, to perform a love spell or to extract magical juice from the moon. Greco-Roman belief systems certainly had an interesting take on the subject when it comes to the magic of the moon. Indeed, since the dawn of time, celestial bodies have been studied and worshiped and most naturally woven into myths and religious and or spiritual practices. For example, in ancient Celtic society, the moon had a great deal of impact. Their calendar was influenced by the phases of the moon and the 13th moon cycle was the center of their celebrations. Author Eugene Daly wrote that it was believed that any work or business undertaken when the moon was growing, waxing, would be successful. Work begun when the moon was waning was considered less likely to succeed. A child born when there was a new moon was thought to have good prospects, prospects for both health and wealth. In fact, Arthur reported that according to the Roman sources, the knowledge about the moon and the observation of its faces was one of the most important subjects to the Druids. The complexities of the knowledge of the moon cycles is something our modern culture has lost, at least the peculiarities of this knowledge. Some mysticism, more often than not, is related to the moon having a feminine aspect within magic. Fluidity, change, intuition. The cyclical nature seen and experienced all around us. In paganism, the energy of the moon is tailor-made for connecting with the feminine divine. Linking with the moon's powers offers a path to manifest. It is within the very fabric of the universe's cyclical nature and doing so amplifies a pagan practitioner's magical power. Pagan rituals around the phases of the moon often implore sympathetic magic, which is essentially like attracts like. For example, if I cast a spell during a new moon and it is my intention to manifest, there's a better chance that it will happen. Seeped within this divine experience, I am tapping into the ability to reset and embark on a new desired path as well as using the energy available to all in the universe to do so. According to this pagan perception, what a person desire already exists. And when emboldened by the power of the new moon, representative of new beginnings, they are able to reach out for what is already there. Each practitioner celebrates the moon in their own way. Such methods of reverence can include singing, dancing, 
making music, writing poetry, and many, many other additional ways. Many things factor into such rituals, such as the phases of the moon, astrology for some practitioners, and intention and emotion. Each practitioner is different. Each path is naturally, inevitably different. And each stage of the moon and her ever consistent cyclical nature often offers pagan practitioners a different opportunity to delve into magic with differing intentions. Such rituals can also involve letting go of the old to make way for the new. Some pagan practitioners include astrology in their choice for the best time to cast spells. In astrology, there is a recognition of divine energy that the moon possesses. A practitioner's innermost feelings, emotions, and divine femininity. That energy is used in combinations with specifics that differ for each practitioner. For example, according to author Silver Ravenwolf, an Aries moon is an excellent time to work magic for new ventures particularly if they are financial, medical, or related to construction. Because Aries is a fire sign, it is energetic, good for working magic for personal strength and stamina. With additional conditions, such as last week's new moon in Aries, with the new moon solar eclipse, eclipse even more power is available for practitioners. Practitioners may also associate a deity with their moon rituals. This practice dates back, historically speaking. For example, in ancient Greece mythology, the moon was associated with the goddess Selene. Much like her brother Helios, the sun god, she drove a magical chariot across the sky. In fact, in the piece Homeric hymn, to Celine. The air unlit before glows with the light of her golden crown and her rays beam clear. Whensoever bright Celine, having bathed her lovely body in the waters of the ocean and donned her far gleaming raiment and yoked her strong necked shining team, drives on her long maned horses at full speed at evening. In the mid-month, then her great orbit is full, and then her beams shine brightest as she increases. So is she is a sure token and sign to mortal men. Selene was often associated with the Greek goddess Artemis and Hecate, whereby together the goddesses explored the forests of Greece with an entourage made up of mortals, hunters, and nymphs. The Roman goddess Diana is the Greek equivalent of Selene and Hecate. An additional Roman moon deity is Luna. She was known as the counterpart of Selene, but was replaced by Diana later. In China, the moon goddess Shayong Guan is known to have attained enlightenment. Though she could have remained enmeshed in the blissful filled, bliss filled state of Nirvana, she chose to remain on earth in order to relieve suffering. This is but a small handful of references amongst the halls of time. So many moon deities exist in the pantheos of cultures throughout history that it would be quite difficult to cover them all in the allotted time. So let's move on and take a closer look at a few of the celebrations around the world surrounding the moon. The moon holds and has held a place enmeshed in the rhythms of the life of the universe in ancient indigenous cultures. The cyclical nature of the said universe echoes through the moon. The phases of a person's life, of the agricultural cycle, etc. In fact, the native people of Turtle Island, of which there are nearly innumerable number of tales on the subject, of the 13 grandmother moons. 
One of my favorite stories is that of the Sky Woman. According to Wilfred Buck, researcher and knowledge keeper of the Opsakwa Cree Nation in Canada, long before the world was created, there was an island in the sky inhabited by sky people. One day, a pregnant sky woman drops through a hole created by an uprooted tree and begins to fall for what seems like an eternity. Coming out of the darkness, she eventually sees oceans. The animals from this world congregate, trying to understand what they see in the sky. A flock of birds is sent to help her. The birds catch her and gently guide her down onto the back of the great turtle. The water animals like otters and beavers have prepared a place for her on the turtle's back. They bring mud from the bottom, bottom of the ocean and place it on turtle's back until solid earth begins to form and increase in size. Turtle's back becomes the sky. Until solid earth begins to form, as I said before, Turtle's back becomes the Sky Woman's home, and the plant she's brought down with her from Sky World, including tobacco and strawberries, are her medicine. She makes a life for herself and becomes the mother of the Hadnoise life as we know it today. In 1992, a group of women following both their dreams and visions reinitialized the ancient Aztec traditional moon dances banned by the Spanish conquistadors when they colonized regions of Mexico 5,000 years ago. Known as the Danza de la Luna, or moon dance, is now practiced across the world. During this four day ritual, the feminine divine is believed to be amplified, allowing both cleansing and empowering. During this time, many participants drink only water and tea with sugar or honey. The Hindu Balinese community celebrates the moon as well. During the full moon, locals believe that the purification powers of the moon are at its height. The most sacred of ceremonies is known as the Purnama, occurring each full moon. As Bali is known as the island of the gods, ceremonies including the Melukot purification occur all over, but especially there amongst other locations, obviously each full moon. During the Molokot, a person would immerse themselves in holy water. It is believed to wash away, for example, negative karma and sickness. This cleansing ritual occurs during both the full and new moon during the day. Known prospectively as the Purnama and the Thailand celebrations, Indeed, holy and powerful religious and spiritual cleansings occur. One of the most important festivals in Asia is the Mid-Autumn Festival. Celebrated in different ways, this celebration is held in China, Vietnam, Korea, Japan, and Singapore. It is celebrated in the middle of autumn and goes by many different names, depending upon the location of the festival. This is the time of year when the moon is at its roundest and brightest in the sky. The Mid-Autumn Festival is also a harvest festival, and ancient emperors believed that worship of the moon ensured a plentiful harvest. Modernity may have lost many of the original traditions, act, traditional activities associated with the festival, but some remain. In China, many still put out offerings to the boon goddess and moon cakes are plentiful around this time of year. In South Korea, Hangwai is celebrated with visits with family. Japan celebrates with moon viewing parties 
which include music, poetry, all of these things are shared with one another. Vietnam celebrates with lanterns and lion dances performed in the streets. As previously mentioned, each location may have a different name for the festival or way of celebrating, but it is all done under the bright harvest moon. Last, but certainly not least, the Virgin Mary is often associated with the moon. Bishop Fulton Sheen wrote that the Virgin Mary is often represented or symbolized by the moon because as the moon reflects the sun, light of the sun, she reflects the light of her sun. God who made the sun also made the moon. The moon does not take away from the brilliance of the sun. All its light is reflected from the sun. The Blessed Mother reflects her divine son. Without him, she is nothing. I'm not sure that I entirely believe that portion, but it is quite beautiful. As is evident, cultures throughout the ages have celebrated under the light of the moon. Such celebrations have clearly, though altered, survived into modernity. Whether deity, messenger from the gods, magical or supernatural, the moon is and has been the center of worship for many throughout time. Perhaps her gravitational pull affected not only the oceans, but the hearts of all humankind. That consistent ebb and flow, offering a peek into the cyclical nature of the universe. Her power is undeniable. And when tapping into that power for a pagan, one has the ability to both let go of the old and manifest the new, allowing us in part to live in balance with nature herself. There is an immeasurable beauty and complexity in the tapestry that we as humanity have woven together. Unitarian Universalists have always had a deep love for that which we can share, but not always explain. Our deep appreciation for a spiritual je ne sais quoi, if you will. You can believe that chanting on the moon will bring you what you need. You can see it only as the bringer of tides. You can see it through the perspective as of historical civilizations. No matter how you see it, personally, we all see it. And that in and of itself is absolutely amazing. And so I invite you this morning to remember that regardless of what you hold and carry in your heart and mind today, all you need to do, weather permitting, is step outside tonight and know that you stand alongside countless others, both in modernity and the past, when glancing up at the moon. She is powerful. She is timeless. Our magical mother moon. Blessed be and amen.